I'm Ron Burgundy, and I'm a GQ patrol in this bloke's shed. My interior has been absolutely neglected and stinks of Black Panther and cat piss, and I'm not happy about it. So we better sort this out today, or I'm gone. I'm thinking of something very classy, something that's gonna blow some socks off. So grab a malt whiskey and sit back on that couch right now. You better watch this. It's gonna be a big deal. Proudly supported by Superior Engineering, Diesel Conversions Australia, and in part by. Right, welcome back to another episode. Today we are back in the shed. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been in here, so it's nice to be back. But we have a whole heap of interior mods that we are going to do to Ron Burgundy. Now I've got some fresh seats. My seats had some tears in it. We've got dash mat, head unit, which is really cool. We're going to talk about that later on. New steering wheel, gauges, pillar pod. We've got some seat covers and we've got some fresh carpet, a few other things going in as well. Now, as excited as I am to get this stuff in, and trust me, I'm excited. There is a lot of work that we need to do first before we can even think about modifying the inside of this. I've already got this pretty well stripped out, but there is a lot of stuff that needs doing. So you can see this dash, pretty crusty old dash, very dirty. I'm actually thinking about pulling that out and painting it before we put it back in. It is a kind of gray color, and I want that to be black. Then the next problem is the floor. We have rust in multiple spots, there's holes over there. There's a few holes here that need to be patched up. So we're gonna to have to do that. Then we are going to get the paint out, paint the whole inside of the floor. We've gotta remove the back seats as well because there is some stuff that I wanna do back there. Remember that we're doing a shaved engine bay. Now over that side typically is the battery. We can't put the battery in because, well, we're doing a shaved engine bay. So the battery is gonna go in the back of this car, which means that we're gonna to have to strip the back out and figure out a spot to mount at least two batteries. So we can have one AGM, one start battery. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be done, but we're gonna start by cleaning out the interior, getting the dash out, probably paint the dash, start patching the holes up. Then we can move on to painting and then we can start modifying. Has anybody even checked this guy's credentials? I mean, pulling out a dash and painting it is quite a big job. I don't even think he's a painter. I'm getting really nervous. I think I'm gonna have to go. Oh, Ron, you, you going already? I'm going, I can't sit by and watch you destroy me. Well, I'm really gonna try and make you happy, mate. You bloody better, you bastard. Well, we're removing the dash, obviously. Steering wheel's pretty crusty as well, so we're gonna get rid of that for our new wood grain one. The GQs actually aren't too bad to do, but the main thing is just making sure all your screws are loose. Don't yank on anything if it's not coming freely. Now that they're all gone, all I've gotta do is lift the dash out of the door without scratching the paint. So the dash is out, I've got other things laid out on the bench so I can get them painted. Now one thing that is really a problem with GQ patrols is the center part of the dash here. Down this section where this hole is right here, there is normally a radio and it's really hard to get to because your shifter and everything gets in the way of it and it sits really low. Now the good news is that I've got a solution to that problem from Crow Custom. So this is a head unit that will fit into that gap, but we do need to cut that piece up. So I'm gonna do that before we paint because it kind of makes sense to do that. I'm really excited about that because this thing sucks and I'm gonna start cutting it up, get that fitted into it. Then we can start painting all the dash. That is a much needed upgrade for the GQ. Now this little section down the bottom is where the aircon controls are gonna get relocated to. The rest of it, we didn't really need cigarette lighter, ashtray, all that sort of stuff has been deleted and all that gets replaced by this big screen here and it is looking really good and also has Apple CarPlay, has Bluetooth, everything that you need and it's basically like having an iPad in your car, which is awesome. I'm gonna start prepping the dash and the rest of the stuff. So I need to get all this sanded. We are working with a few different materials here, but for the most part, I'm just going to be using a Scotch-Brite pad because with plastic, you don't really want to go into the uh, material too much. So I'm just gonna be using that pad, rough everything back. I wanna try and get rid of this sticker and a few little bits of like silicon and stuff like that. And just neaten it up enough to get some paint on it. Every time I think that the painting is over, we find something else to paint on this build. But uh, let's start prepping this so we can get it back in the car. 
This stash is made up of metal and plastic. On the metal, we can go ahead and use 240 grit sandpaper, but on the plastic, we can only use a scotch brite. This is because you don't really want to scratch too deep into the plastic as it's very easy to do. So the scotch brite just roughs it up enough for the paint to stick. The main thing you want to focus on though is just making sure you sand every single part in every single spot. Now that the sanding's done, it's time for a soapy bath. For this, I'm using dish soap. This will just help get rid of the last bit of grease and fingerprints that are on the dash. Everything is sanded and washed down and ready to go. I've just sat it on a table outside. So I'm just waiting for that to dry. Then I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some 2K black. I'm just using some plastic primer in an aerosol can first, only on the plastic bits though. I haven't had much luck painting plastic in the past, so I'm trying out some plastic primer. Now I'm only applying a little bit of this. I'm not getting carried away with how much I'm putting on, just making sure that I spray it all over the plastic. Once that's done, I load the top loader up with some black 2K paint and I start spraying, doing a light coat at first and then a super wet coat after that. The results are far from perfect, but everything is now black and ready to go. All right, it is now the next day and all of this should be dry. That looks really good. It's not perfect, but it's close. Now, yesterday I also did vacuum out the car because there's all the dust left from painting it. So the inside is ready to go, but we do have some things that we need to fix. What I want to do on the inside is use this product called Stone Guard on the whole floor inside. I've got three cans. I don't know if it's enough yet, it should be close. But if we can paint the whole inside of the bottom of the car, then we can go ahead and lay our brand new carpet. I'm actually very excited to show you guys this carpet. I'm a little bit nervous too, because it's very different, but I think it's gonna look cool. Hopefully it does. But first we need to fix the inside of the car. It's actually looking really good in here after a nice vacuum. I've also gone ahead and wiped the dash or what's left of the dash down. I vacuumed that out as well. There's a lot of cobwebs and stuff, so that was nice to do. Taking the very back seat out as well and the carpet just so I could check out the floor. It's actually not too bad, so we are going to be making this floor look a lot better though. So I forgot to buy a wire wheel for the grinder, so I'm left with the drill and this tiny little wire wheel, so I'm going to be using that on all the rusty areas. Then we can go ahead and paint. Now, the paint that I've got is designed to be used through a Schutz gun, but I'm just going to be painting it on with a paintbrush, but time to get prepping, then we can get painting. It's me, Ron again. And I'm not gonna lie, but I've seen some pretty crazy shit in my life and using a drill with a wire wheel is up on that shit list. I mean, what are you thinking, Tom? Broadcasting it live, people at home will be disgraced. Anyway, I thought I'd just pop by to see if you guys at home are entertained enough to drop a like and maybe follow along with the builds and adventures. You are not gonna wanna miss it. It would mean the absolute world to me and you'd be my new best friend. Anyway, what's this guy doing? More painting? God, is this a whole episode on arts and crafts? Thought this was a full drive channel. I can't look any longer, I'm gone. Prep is finally done and we are ready for paint. Inside is looking really good, let's have a look. It's looking a thousand times better in here. Down the back was really, really bad and it is like A1 now. So you can see everything is cleaned up and sanded back. You probably just see me doing that. Uh, I've put on a rust converter and primer onto anywhere that was showing a little bit of surface rust. That's just gonna help keep that rust at bay. It also seals it off as well as acting as a primer. Pretty much ready to start painting. So the product I'm using is Urki Protect. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's basically a stone guard that you would typically spray out of a Schutz gun. Now, Schutz guns get really messy. I don't think I'm gonna use that because we would have to mask up all the car, we've just painted it. So if I got paint on this, I'd be spewing. So I think what we'll do is just put this into a container and just paint it on with a paintbrush. I'm gonna chuck you guys on a time-lapse, get that done, and then we are one step closer to finishing this interior.
Right, that is the interior finally done. Now everything is painted, all the rust is gone, and we are ready to start installing stuff. Now, for anyone wondering, I use three cans. I think they're about $24 a can, so about 75 bucks to do the whole interior with a paintbrush, which isn't too bad. Obviously, you could spray that out of a Schutz gun, get a bit better of a texture, maybe be a little bit tougher, but because we're putting some brand new carpet over the top, I didn't really care about any of that. I did care about mess though, and uh, that was definitely the way to do it to avoid the mess. But yeah, we're finally ready to start bolting all this stuff back in and start doing our mods that we seen at the start of the video. I do have something though that's very controversial that is on the car, or kind of sitting on the car right now that I wanna show you guys, but I'm just not sure if I wanna do it in this episode but I think I will because I wanna see everyone's reaction in the comments below. Man, it's one of those things that you are either gonna love or you're gonna hate. I personally really like it. I think it's very different and I think that no one does it and I'm excited to um, you know, be a little bit different on this build. Why don't I Chucky's off the tripod and we'll just have a look. Right, so this is an aluminum bull bar that I've just picked up off Facebook Marketplace. I believe it's a TJM but uh, could be wrong about that. Now, it's really cool, because it's kind of like a semi five poster, but obviously not a five poster, but it's got this really aggressive kind of um, section to it there. And obviously it's aluminium, which means that we're gonna be able to polish this up to almost a mirror finish and add a little bit more chrome to this build, which I'm really digging at the moment. Um, obviously the downside to go on an aluminium bar is they're not as strong as a steel bar, uh, but I will be hopefully building a winch cradle behind this as well. It's definitely not gonna be like a permanent bull bar. I could always just unbolt it, change it over, but I really wanna try and make something work. I only paid a hundred bucks for this bar. So um, if we can make this work with a winch cradle in, make it look cool, that is money well saved because a steel bar is up around the two grand mark at the moment. I'm curious to uh, see what you guys think in the comments below about the bull bar. So definitely let me know and uh, we'll try and you know polish this thing up soon and hopefully get it on the car properly. But anyway, let's get back to the interior. I'm gonna start fitting the dash and then start putting the mods in, which is the fun part about this episode. So I'm gonna start getting into it. Reassembly is as easy as you make it. If you keep your bolts and nuts organized because there's so many different sorts, it definitely makes it a heck of a lot easier. I didn't do that, so it took me a while to figure out which ones go where, even though I only pulled this apart last week. But anyway, this is the most exciting part, putting everything back together and getting to install some mods finally after a week's worth of work. How good. Diesel, what are you looking at, mate? Starting to make pretty good progress, aren't I? Got the dash in, got the steering wheel on, boss kit's in. Got the Crow Customs head unit all installed, which is looking friggin' awesome. Previously, if you put a head unit in a patrol, it's all the way down here where our aircon controls are now. So lifting the head unit up and bringing those aircon controls down is absolutely perfect. Now, I'm actually thinking about modifying this gear stick as well because it's sitting up quite high. So might dock it down and re-weld it a little bit lower. It was a bit of a process painting that dash, but definitely worth it now that I'm seeing it in there and nice and satin black. I think that looks really good. Now I've still got the gauges to do, obviously seats and stuff, but I really am excited to try this carpet that I've got. Now the thing about the carpet is that I didn't get black. I got a uh, very, very questionable color. Hopefully that looks good. And before I show you this, just remember that it's my car and it's my rules and um, it may not look good and it may not be everyone's taste, but I'm willing to give it a crack. So let's have a look at the carpet. It is um, Ron Burgundy Red. This is nice burgundy color. It's almost identical to the paint on the car. We're going red carpet, and I never thought I would ever say that sentence in my life, but we're gonna try it out, put it in. It's gonna look good, trust me. <sighs> to install this carpet, we are gonna have to make some cuts. So this section here is actually designed to go way up in the back under the dash there. So I'm gonna have to kind of cut somewhere around here for the gear levers, and then also need to cut for the handbrake as well. Then they got a lot of cutting and figuring out to do. So I'm gonna grab a fresh Stanley blade and start cutting into this. Hopefully don't stuff it up, but I'll chuck you guys on a time-lapse while I do it. And yeah, red carpet is a go. Holy crap, 
I absolutely love how this carpet has turned out. Red is my favorite color by far. So I'm digging this a lot. We've got the black center console. We've got the custom center console here actually from OSS 4x4, the Crow Customs head unit with the wood grain steering wheel. Everything is just tied in absolutely perfectly. Now, there's obviously still some stuff to do, but um, yeah, super happy with the carpet. I did stuff up a few bits here and there um, and had to hot glue some pieces back in, but we're not gonna talk about that anymore. We're just gonna keep moving on like nothing happened. Now, we obviously need to sit down in the car, which brings me to the front seats here. Now, I did go out and pick up two new seats. Well, they're not new, they're off a second-hand car, but the ones that are in this car were ripped. A lot of GQs are, so it's quite rare to find some unripped seats. I'm going to be throwing some seat covers on these. We'll do them before we put them in the car. I don't think I'll bolt them in just yet because they might need to come out. So we'll get the seat covers on, get them in the car, and uh, yeah, we'll be vibing with some more retro stuff. Some sheep's wool seat covers, red carpet, it's full retro mode at the moment. Hey, Diesel. Hey, buddy. The seat covers I got are just from Autobahn, but a whopping $240 for a one star. So you can imagine how much a five star freaking cost, but these are the cheapest, genuine sheep's wool ones. Let's uh, get them on. Bah! God, that was easy. These are actually really nice. I've never had seat covers before, and that is the honest truth. Every car that I've ever bought that has seat covers, I throw them out, and I've never ran seat covers, so it's nice to um, try them out for once. My pop might be watching this, but he used to have a patrol, and I remember he had the uh, sheep's wool seat covers in that. So brings me back to his car. They were gray though, but still cool. Right, she is definitely coming together now, guys. You can see seat covers are on, bloody red carpet, match it in perfectly. Now, I've got here an old floor mat. It's actually out of the GU, uh, but we will be running floor mats in this car for obvious reasons. The red carpet's going to get quite dirty if we don't, but uh, that is what she looks like with a floor mat in. I feel like the red carpet is exactly how a Ron Burgundy car should be. A little bit subtle, but super over the top. So guys, that is pretty much the interior. The only thing I've got to do is the gauges. So I'm going to quickly do those now. I don't know if it's obvious at the moment, but I have not wired up the head unit. I will not be wiring up these gauges just yet. I like to do that when everything's live so I can test where power is coming from and whatnot. So when we get the batteries in, we'll go through and wire all of that later on. But we will just sit these up there for now to see what they look like. Now, there is a lot of gauges out there. Um, there's a lot of expensive ones. There's a lot of cheap ones. I feel like these SAS ones are sort of in the middle. I did run these in coal and they were always good. They never failed. So I decided to get them again. And the main purpose that I wanted to get these for is the fact that they are a dual gauge. So, so we've got oil pressure, water temp, boost, and exhaust all in uh, two gauges. So four gauges in two gauges, can't beat that. Pillar pod is just from eBay, auto technical one. That's where I always get them from. Um, haven't even opened this up yet, but hopefully looks good and hopefully it's black. Yep, there's literally gonna be nothing to this because I'm not wiring them, but I'm just gonna sit them in there for now, sit that up in the pillar, and then we are done with the interior. I almost forgot about this, but I've got a dash mat, which I always run dash mats, and I've got the sheepskin seatbelt straps as well to match the seat covers, so I'm gonna throw them in while I'm doing the gauges. Well, that is the interior. Now, obviously, there's still a lot of stuff that needs to get done, so this is only part one of the interior build on this car. Whoa, whoa, whoa. El Chapo, you better calm your pants down right now. You didn't even ask for my opinion. I am completely offended. Oh, well, sorry, what do you think, Ron? Do you like it? Do I like it? I love it. It's perfectly classy, perfectly elegant, exactly how a Ron Burgundy build should be. You have hit the nail on the head, Sonny Jim. Good work. Well, that's good, mate. I'm glad you like it, and I think that it turned out awesome as well. In my opinion, everything has just tied in perfectly, and I think this looks really great, and I honestly can't wait to get out and drive it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the bull bar, about the red carpet, about the retro vibe as a whole, because I'm actually really enjoying it. And I've got to enjoy it to build it, to make content for you guys. So think about that before you roast me. A big thanks to Brock from Crow Customs for sending out the head unit as well. I was really keen to try it out. It's been a big problem with the GQs uh, previously with the head unit being mounted down below. So to bring it up higher is awesome. It's just topped off the interior. So. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check them out and get one for your patrol. 
Now, even though I'm still far away, I'm really hoping to get to 100K subs this year. So if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so and I'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you for watching and goodbye.